SCF kids, welcome back. We are tuning in to another episode today from the comfort of your home. But if you haven't heard the exciting news yet, in-person kids ministry is going to be starting up on Easter Sunday. That's just a few short weeks away and I am so excited. Don't worry though, if your family is not quite ready to tune in in person, or if you're sick and can't come on a Sunday morning, SCF Kids Online is still gonna be happening and available for you. So everybody's in your comfy spot in your house, right? Speaking of houses, it's crazy how everybody's house looks so different. No two of them are alike. But have you ever wondered what God's house looks like? I mean, maybe he has the biggest backyard or the coolest home theater system in his basement. I'm just kidding though. But in today's episode, we're gonna learn about a place where God's presence dwell in the Old Testament. So let's check it out. So what's the biggest thing you guys have ever built? What did you end up making it out of? If I'm completely honest with you, building things is not really my strength. I mostly like to decorate things after somebody else builds them. In fact, there was this one time I was trying to make an arbor. You know what that is, right? It looks a little something like this. Yeah, I was making one of those for somebody's wedding. So imagine this bride and groom were supposed to be standing under this beautiful arbor to get married and mine, one, looked horrible and two, I don't think anybody should have stood under it because it was not very sturdy and not safe at all. So I'm like, it's like the day before their wedding and I don't have an arbor for them to stand under. And so I called a friend of mine, he quickly built me up this beautiful arbor. Everybody didn't know the difference, um, but I decided that I probably shouldn't build things out of wood. 
it's just not really for me. Um, in fact, even with these blocks here, I'm not sure what I'm building. Um, I don't know, some flying rocket thing. Yeah, anyways. I thought I'd give it one more try with my building skills today using these cups. So I'm gonna give myself one minute to build a tower out of these cups and then flatten them back down into a stack that looks like this. Now, a minute is not very long at all, so I'm not sure I can do it, but I'm gonna give my very best because you know what? That's all I can do. So with you guys cheering me on, I'm sure I can do it. So go ahead, cheer me on. I'm gonna start my timer for one minute in three, two, one. Go, Jenna, go. Oops, just kidding, it didn't start. Okay, there we go. All right, we're gonna start with a base of eight cups. And we're gonna keep going and going. We are starting off on an okay note here, but a minute is flying by. Oh, oh, no time for mistakes, Jenna, no time for mistakes. How do you think I'm doing? I'm not building a tower too bad. You probably can't even see me anymore because I'm kind of hiding behind all of these cups. Oh boy, I got 20 seconds left. Do you think I can do it? It's getting so tall, I don't even know if you can see it anymore. All right, here we go. Tower is built. The tower comes down just like so. Oh no, I feel like I've got no time left. Ah! Oh! If I didn't, if I didn't drop those cups, I totally would have did it. Anyways, just proves the point I probably shouldn't build anything anymore. But on a more serious note, in our story today, King Solomon builds a temple for God, a temple for the presence of God to dwell, a place where they could go and worship him. If you remember the Israelites when they were wandering through the wilderness, they had a tabernacle or like a tent that they could easily set up and take down as they were traveling from place to place. But this temple that Solomon built was a more permanent structure. You weren't gonna pick it up and move it with you, but it was a place where they could go and they could worship this one true God. So how long do you think it took them to build this, build this temple? Check out this video and listen carefully to hear how long it took them to build this temple. Solomon was the king of Israel after his father, David, died. God made Solomon very wise. Solomon began to build a temple for the Lord. Solomon ordered thousands of workers to help build the temple. They cut cedar logs and stone blocks. They laid a foundation and built the outside of the temple. God blessed the temple and promised Solomon, if you obey my commands, I will keep the promise I made to David. I will live among the Israelites, and I will not abandon my people. The temple was built in seven years. It was beautiful. The cedar paneling inside the temple was carved with ornamental gourds and flower blossoms. Solomon overlaid everything inside the temple with pure gold. He hired men to make bronze furnishings for the temple such as bronze bowls for holding water. When the temple was complete, Solomon moved the Ark of God from its place on Mount Zion to the new temple in Jerusalem. Solomon gathered the leaders of Israel. As the priests moved the Ark to the most holy place in the temple, King Solomon and the leaders sacrificed sheep and cattle to the Lord. When the priests came out of the temple, a cloud filled the temple. God's glory was in the cloud. Solomon turned to speak to the Israelites. Praise God, he said. God promised David that his son would build a temple. 
God kept his promise. Solomon stood and prayed with his hands spread out toward heaven. There is no God like you, he said. Then Solomon thought about the future. He knew Israel would sin and make God angry again. So Solomon asked for forgiveness and he asked God to hear their prayers. When Solomon had finished praying, he encouraged the Israelites to love and obey God. The people returned to their homes joyful because God was good to them. The temple was a place where God was good with his people. The people could go there to make sacrifices and worship God. Today, when we trust in Jesus, he is with us wherever we go. We can look to him for forgiveness and help. So do you guys remember a couple weeks ago when David was going to build a temple to worship God in? And God said, no, David, you're not going to build the temple, but your son Solomon is going to build it. Well, the time has finally come. So Solomon had been king for four years, and then he starts to build this temple that God had promised he was going to make. And guess what? God kept his promise. Did you catch in the video, though, how long it took for them to build this temple? Yeah, it took seven years. Can you imagine? That's older than some of you. It's crazy. But God fulfilled this promise. So once this temple was built, everything inside was covered with gold. It was beautiful. And then they moved the Ark of the Covenant, which they had traveled around with them through the wilderness, into this temple. And so God's presence dwelled inside of this temple and the people would go and they would offer sacrifices and they would worship God. But do you ever wonder why the Israelites worship God in a temple, but why we don't worship God in a temple today? Let's listen to questions from kids and see if we can get to the bottom of that question. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Today, Zoe from Blackfoot, Idaho asks, Why do we have churches today instead of a temple? You know, in today's Bible story, we talked about how God wanted his people to build a temple so that he could dwell with them, he could be with them, and so that he could have a place for them to worship him. They could meet together and worship as a group of people. And that was vital for that time, but also it pointed to something better. The temple pointed to how God would provide Jesus for us, that Jesus would come, that he would lay his life down for us, he would provide forgiveness of sin, and that he was the way that God would live with his people. So the temple was just temporary. It pointed to a greater truth, a more beautiful truth of Jesus. So now that Jesus has come, we don't need the temple any longer. And God has replaced it with the church. So what this means is that if you have trusted in Christ, you are part of the church and God wants you to gather together with other believers on a regular basis to worship him, to grow in your faith. So here's a question back for you. How can you be a meaningful part of the church? Ooh, kids, it's memory verse time. And today's game is called, who said that? Here's how it's gonna work. So some of you guys have recorded yourself saying our memory verse. I'm gonna play that back for all of you to listen to. And before they finish saying the verse, you have to try and guess whose voice it is that's reading the verse. We're gonna have a few of you roll through. The answer will come up on the screen, um, but you're challenged to see if you can guess it before you see the name come up on the screen. Are you up for the challenge? It could be difficult because some of you haven't seen each other for over a year. So it might be hard to remember what everybody's voices sound like. So are you ready for your challenge? In three, two, one, go. 
If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him James one five. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and will be given him. James 1, 5 If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. James 1, 5 If any of you that was done, you should ask God who gives in to all without me. It will be given him. James 1 5. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. James 1 5. Of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without you approaching. And it will be given him James one five. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him James one five. Well, how'd you do? Did you get them all? Did you at least get the one where I was reading it? Because you've been listening to my voice for like the last year on SEF Kids Online, so that one might have been a little bit easier. Anyways, it's time for you to go get your Bible, go get your Bible. Anyways, I'm not going to sing the whole song for you, but uh, yeah, go ahead, get up, grab your Bible, and I'll be right back here with you in just a minute. Great job, you guys. Now I want you to open them up to Psalm chapter 132, verse 7. I'll give you a few minutes, and then we'll read it together. It says, Let us go to the Lord's house. Let us worship before his throne. When Solomon had built this temple, the Israelites were so excited to worship God in this new temple that had been built. They were joyful because God had been good to them. And the Bible says that every good gift comes from God. 
And we have lots to thank God for because he's been good to us in our life too. And so we're gonna sing a couple songs. And while we do that, I want you to think about some of the things and some of the ways that God is good to us. I see the sun coming up and I can't help but think of your love. Oh, I, I see the trees as they sway and I think what a beautiful day. Even when the rain's pouring down, in the sky oh as sure as the moon's rising high yeah i know you'll never change no your love will always remain even when the rain's pouring down no i'm not gonna frown cause you
Well, it's that time of the morning again, guys. I know, I know. You're sad to see me go, but I promise you I'll be back next Sunday morning for another episode of SCF Kids Online. But to wrap up our episode for today, I thought we'd play a little game of Hangman. So I've got um, a spinny wheel over here with letters from the alphabet. So it's gonna choose them for me because you can't choose them from the other side of the screen. I can't hear you. Um, anyways, so if the words are in this sentence, if you wanna call it that, I'll put them in there. If not, we'll add to our hangman, okay? Pretty easy to understand. So our spinning wheel gives us the letter V. Uh, the letter V is gonna start us off. And surprisingly, there is a letter V. Any guesses what it might be already? Pretty tricky that fast, huh? The next letter is an N. We'll remove the N from our wheel. Shout out your answers if you know what it is. An A. One A. Can you guys hear the wheel spinning around as it goes? You gotta cheer when it finishes. A K. There is no K in our word. Take a guess, what letter do you think it's gonna pick next? It is picking the letter P. There is no P. Better yet, if you know what these two words are, shout them out. Oh, this one might help us a little bit. Gives you the first letter and the last letter. You'll have to let me know if you uh, next time you see me if you guess this before we get to the end. We have an R. Ears? Oh, there's an extra, extra letter. Ooh, spin away, spin away. We are going to add the letter E. That's going to help a lot. Seven what, you guys? Seven what? Can you guess it? Seven pairs? We got the letter T. Seven tears? Nope. We could be a while getting the letter we need. Uh, should, should we just add it in? We got a B. Seven bears? Yeah, no. Let's try it one more time. Dun, 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 dun. Seven tears, fear, seven fears. We got the letter Y. Seven years. It took seven years for King Solomon and his crew to build the temple that God had promised he was gonna build years before that. God is so good. Let's pray together. Lord, we praise you for your knowledge, wisdom, and power. We praise you because you love us despite our sinfulness. Help us to have wisdom and see that we need Jesus. Give us faith to trust him. Use us in your plan to reach the whole world with the gospel. Amen.